Hey everyone, how are we? Let's make sure we are good to go here. Give a shout out if you're here so I know I'm not talking to myself. Hi Karina, hi Pamela, hi Debbie, hi Charlene, Sheena. Welcome, happy birthday everybody. Hi Denise, hi Mary from Ohio, not too far away. We are, oops, not sure, there we go. Okay, we're back. <laughs> um, we'll give everyone a second to pop on here. And before I get started, I don't want anyone to miss anything. So um, we'll hope everyone, hi Lisa from PA. You're gonna have to tell me where, see if we're, we're neighbors. Um, oh, from York, hi, Jean. Jill, hi, hi, Deetra, Casey, hey, everybody. Um, so who's ready to create? Uh, what a great day we've had so far and how fun is it that Kiwi Lane set this up for us so that we can have our own birthday party. Um, and it's super fun for me because August is my birthday month too. So, um, and I never ever really celebrate. So this was kind of a fun thing for me to be able to do and fun to be able to participate in too. So um, this is cool. Thanks everybody at Kiwi Lane. <laughs> so um, thank you, Carrie. All right, so how many of you have ever scrapped book, scrapbook with 11 pages or more? Wow, and of course it's Kiwi Lane's 11th birthday, so we know why that was important, but uh, it, it was a little bit of a challenge, but I was super excited to be able to pull from my long list of um, resources that I've had, you know, those, those sketches that you plan to use, but you never get to use. I found this thing, it was uh, the birthday cake. It was super, it was perfect for this. So I'm gonna give you some tips and things first, right off the bat, as far as pictures go, um, because I know Debbie asked early on what size pictures to print. And it's, uh, there are a lot of options in doing this lay, uh, layout as far as what size of pictures to be able to do. Um, so I usually start with six by four by six traditionally, and then cut them down using our wonderful photos and photo mats um, to make them fit to the page. And that's exactly what I did. And I'll, we'll talk more about sizing and so forth um, when we get to the construction of the page. But I wanted to give you that heads up right off the bat. Um, the other thing with the birthday cake is panoramics, or if you have the ability to print um, using a selfie or, you know, the end up layouts and all of those different formats, these layers are great. You can print a solid one sheet. Uh, once you know the size that's going to fit, you can print the solid layer as one photo rather than cutting and piecing a lot of photos together. So just keep that in mind whenever you are um, uh, thinking about photos to select. I really, and on this next layout that I do, um, I am going to put the team picture, the one team picture from convention at the bottom here, but I need to be able to print that on an eight and a half by 11 size um, photo or piece of paper, and I didn't have that capability. So that that is a long one. Panoramics are great here too. So um, so that's the option. To build this page, I used the four by sixes and then used my photo templates and photo, photo mats to size them to fit into the dimensions that I needed. On this page, the mirror page, and thank goodness I could use a double page layout to get 11 photos in. <laughs> I did use my uh, four by four photo template um, and just use squares to kind of bring that, that all together. So I love my photos and my, uh, my photo templates and my photo mat templates. Um, these were four by six photos also uh, before I cut them down. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, just a little tidbit. There are so many different ways to add 
an abundance of photos, two pages, um, and being able to size them down or being able to cut them into different sizes is extremely beneficial. And the photos and the photo templates make that really easier or really easy. So um, I hope, Debbie, that I didn't confuse you by too much too much by saying four by six, but that that's a little explanation for that. Um, all right, so I'm using a brand new quarantine kit, which who knew? Um, that the quarantine kit was going to be great for a birthday layout, but I figured, hey, it's a COVID birthday, it's 2020, so we might as well just turn this into a COVID birthday celebration layout. So, um, and I didn't have birthday photos, but our last gathering, since it's Kiwi Lane's birthday, was convention, so I just turned them into a celebration, and uh, it's kind of a wishful greeting rather than a birthday party, but it was a great celebration. So um, I'm excited to use this kit though. Did everybody get theirs? And um, has anybody played with it? Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's just, it's wonderful. It's super wonderful. And the colors are, um, very, very, very close, if not identical to the brand new Kiwi Lane colors. So it's just super to be able to play with. But the really fun thing that I liked about this was this grid paper in the back. So you'll notice that my layout has a graph paper in the back. Um, I buy this anytime I can, anywhere I can. Neutral backgrounds, um, either in white or cream, or those backgrounds that have a fine print on. And that helps me extend then my page kit. But Kiwi Lane just jumped in there, Susan and Shiloh and everybody with their master, masterful design techniques, you know, jumped ahead and included the graph paper in this kit. So I'm going to use this as my background, my foundation, and then my other pieces we'll use for the for the borders and the accents and the framing um, and those things. Um, the wonderful uh, cards, journaling cards and spots that are in here are um, super beneficial. I didn't use them on the page layout though, so I'm just going to set them aside and um, we'll be back. Um, other tools and things that I use just as a heads up so that you can refer to this and I should mention too, as you've probably heard, um, this video will be available for replay on the events page um, on the Kiwi Lane website and I'll share a link with that uh, later on as soon as I get it and uh, those of you that are hoping to refer to it later on, we'll be able to do so then at that time. Uh, so share that with everyone that is um, that you know of that maybe was joining in, but maybe but hasn't been able to. So um, all right, let's see here. Some additional tools and template uh, products that I used. I did pull some extra cardstock. Uh, matching cardstock. There's plenty in the kit to use, um, but I pulled some matching cardstock to go with uh, a couple dark. This is I used as my photo mat. It's a dark teal. I have some blingy. It's not glitter paper, but just some bling, uh, some shiny cardstock also that I may work in. A solid white, and then there's some orange also, which I used. I had letter stickers also, some twine that I put around the little cupcake and that I hope to use for balloons today. Um, of course, I have my distress ink, my adhesive scissors. I have some curved tip scissors and then the templates. Can we talk about the templates? I hope everyone ordered their party um, set today. This is the 2018. It was our third kit for Kiwi Club. And I, this is one of my most precious sets. And it's funny, I just dem demonstrated using this last week. And this little bugger right here, I'll tell you what, it puts the, it puts the icing on the cake. It really does. Um, for ice cream cones, for cupcakes, on cake, the whole nine yards. So make sure that if you um, are Kiwi Club member, 
that you pop on and grab that. And while they last, and I'm not sure, um, I should have checked, but I forget how long this is gonna be available. If it's just through the weekend or if it's all week long, but, um, and there's an updated uh, paper line with the party template set. So this I'll be using today. I am using Contagious, the new um, with the kit, uh, uh, the new quarantine kit. I am using Funky Frills also. And uh, I have just one, I'm using Funky Frills 4. I'm using Abbey Road 1B. And then I have my, uh, where did it go? Scallops, let me grab the number for you here. Scallops is um, 1A, scallop is 1A. And of course, if you don't have scallop, Cedar Trails is perfect, that works. Um, what else? I do have Celebrate. I have Rings, we're using Rings 3. Tiny Shapes, oh my goodness. Susan and crew, can we bring back Tiny Shapes? Can we pull it out of the vault, please? <laughs> if you don't have Tiny Shapes though, the little hexagon, which happens to be the, the bottom of the cupcake, um, there is a Kiwi Club, our Kiwi Club uh, kit also has the, the um, uh, oh yeah, the many, 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 and this was March's kit, um, all of the different um, uh, hexagons here, uh, so you can use that for the shape also, um, and then celebrate, we're using the um, uh, 5T, let me just show you how this works. There's our cupcake. And when we put this little swirly do on top of it, look at that. <laughs> so that's why you have to have all three of these sets, guys, you have to have. Um, so Celebrate and the other, we're using something else from Celebrate. It escapes me right now, but we are, we do use something else from that. Um, I pulled the hello templates also. This is from the snap frame um, set, the first one design kit. Uh, and then I used, um, I did use our brackets. So this is bracket accessory three and one. Um, what else do I have here? I think that may be it. There may be something else and I'll just tell you about that as we uh, go on. But basically that is it. Plus your photos and photo maps. Um, are super, super helpful. So um, what else do I have here? I think that might be it. So please, if you have questions as we go down, I am gonna be drawing a door prize here as we get through, as we get through, we'll give everybody time to pop on and um, let me pull up the list here. So we have that. And then um, I think we're going to get rolling here. The only other thing that I did pull, and I think I said this already, were the um, uh, letter stickers. And if you're, if you're using, you know, um, Cricut or another um, uh, die cut machine of any kind to create your letter stickers, that's fine, or to create your titles and so forth. I'm finding I really love to use the uh, pre-printed title pages and um, or titles that are in the journaling blocks and so forth uh, and the letter stickers. So uh, whatever floats your boat. All right, so we're gonna start with the graph paper as our foundation. I'm going to pull them and set them aside and I'm going to do things a little bit. Uh, well, they may be backward. They may not be backward, but they may, may be backward. I um, tend to design things a little bit differently. Uh, I do still frame an entire page layout, double page layout at once often. But if I need to get something quick, if I have a, a, a time limit like I do today, then I try to eliminate as few, as many steps as possible. So I'm gonna use um, Abbey Road 1B and Funky Frills 4. 
And these will create our borders. So here is the tip. And this also takes my, um, my obsessive, did you ever obsess a lot about, um, well, should I do this? Should I do that? Um, um, all of those things. Um, and unfortunately, it is not, the quarantine kit is not available, but I would suggest calling um, home office or messaging them through the website and checking to see. Um, there may be some creative partners that have excess uh, and there may be some Huey Lane customers who didn't really, who don't like it that they want to um, sell. So I would just say, check there and we'll go from there. And Amy, if you're listening and feel like chiming in, have at it. <laughs> so, all right, so all I did, and let me do this, this might be easier. The other, the other bad habit I have is uh, designing, cutting, tracing, designing right on top of my work. And I know that frustrates a lot of people. So I'm just gonna pull this aside. And all I've done is put my, Funky Frills 4, and let me make sure this is on camera completely. All I've done is put my Funky Frills 4 completely uh, flush with the corner here and traced it. I use an erasable pen too for mine, pencil, whatever it is you're doing, uh, go ahead and use that. And I'm gonna get two borders with my one tracing on this. So all I'm going to do is pull out my trimmer and cut this. I'm going to leave approximately two and a half inches because that's about um, the width that I like to use. Oops, I could cut it if my blade was in my trimmer. Does that happen to anyone else? <laughs> um, so there is that piece and we've got some set that one aside so this is my this will be my two borders that we'll use and i'm going to go ahead and use i love this funky frills the new so many different options for this it was perfect for the um what i was hoping would be um, would come across on my page as like icing dripping down with the side of the cake. So, uh, or even, um, you know, some of our great bakers, our uh, cake decorators and so forth, they do such a great job decorating the um, compo or the compotes, the things that they display their cupcakes and cakes on. It's always decorated so nicely with um, doilies and these things. So I, this is what I thought of originally with this particular um, template with funky frills. So, and it is still available on the website and you guys too, um, make sure that you check out the expired, um, the overstocks of expired Kiwi Club kits are available today too. So you wanna log on and pre-order the 2018 kit, but then you also want to, after you make that purchase and get the idea book, you also want to go on and um, go back in. And if you're not a member of Kiwi Club, you're gonna to need to join in order to be able to see this. But once you're a member of Kiwi Club, when you log in, there are overstocks of past Kiwi Clubs available. And um, I don't know how long they'll last, but they're there. So another benefit to being a Kiwi Club member. So make sure you check those out. And then the new fall release is there as well. So, all right, so there are my two pieces, two of my border pieces. Now my next one I used was, the back side of, let me grab, it is one of the um, other foundation pieces. So in the double page layouts, normally there are four pages, two of the same background colors. 
um, or, or how do I say this without being four pages, two of one color each, and they are great for background pages. So I'm using the blue, which has the pink on the other side, and I'm using my Abbey Road 1B. And we're just going to trim this. And I do, I use the full width when I'm doing things this way, knowing that I can trim off as I lay it out, as I put it on the page, um, I can trim off any width that I need to. Uh, so we're going to do the same thing with the blue here. And I don't know if I mentioned, I have to apologize if I didn't. If you don't have the quarantine kit, um, you're, you know, you're not bound to use the quarantine kit. Use any paper collection that you have, um, birthday themed, or turn this into another, um, turn it into another type layout. I mean, we have cakes for anniversary. We have cakes for all kinds of gatherings. And um, I mean, be creative with it and then share it. Uh, hi, Sharon. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Donna. I'm going to try to catch up here a little bit real quick. Jane, what pen am I using? It is called a friction erasable pen. It's used in quilting. I love when I can, um, you know, double up and use my quilting tools for my paper crafting obsession and vice versa. Um, I actually do a lot of quilting wool applique using my templates, my Kiwi Lane templates. So, um, and the friction erasable pen, it's a refillable pen. Um, and I use that to mark dots and things for darts and, you know, to match and so forth um, in my quilting and even in my garment sewing. I, I should, um, drop a hint too. I'm a retired home economics family and consumer sciences teacher. So um, I used Kiwi Lane in my classroom the last few years that I taught and <laughs> have just um, consistently uh, continued to do it. I've scrapbooked all my life, but um, I loved the templates because I could use them back and forth on all of my obsessions. So Hope that answers your question, Jane. If you have more, just reach out and I'll be glad to share some other info. Oh, Valerie, my scissors, yes. Um, so a little bit about the curved scissors. <laughs> um, these little buggers are like gold. They're really like gold. And I have another pair. This is my older pair. Um, I have another pair that I use that, um, have a little bit of a longer, wider handle. They're both left hand and right hand. And I can get you the resource for them. And the, the name is not coming up right now. These are no longer available. They are a Fiskars, um, again, embroidery scissor. <laughs> again, I'm using all of my sewing supplies for my scrapbooking. <laughs> and, um, um, gotta, you know, gotta make it all work, gotta justify buying the tools, but they are a godsend. I use them for um, everything. Um, and I've, I've learned that my tool, or I've discovered that my tool bag is a universal tool bag now. I keep my, um, my sewing, knitting, quilting in um, my, bag with all my adhesives and all of those good things. So it's it's kind of funny, but it's not funny. And I think someone else who asked how uh, someone asked about the ink. The ink I am using it today is a Tim Holtz ink, um, distress ink. I also probably the most favorite ink that I use is and I don't know. Excuse my arm. Here it is. Um, I just packed these up for another class that I'm doing, so it'd be organized. But my um, quick quotes, uh, chalk inks, these are my favorite. These by all means are my favorite. You hold them like this and give it a go. But these are available on the Kiwi Lane website and um, I believe the daubers are available as well. So 
um, access them. They, they're great. This is my go-to. Either of them will, will work. So this is vintage photo. And um, there is a refill, an ink refill for it also that will keep it good and um, soaked, full of color. I just put a new sponge on the bottom here. So we're gonna get that inked up and spread that around. And you guys know how to get into the pointed edge here. You just place your finger underneath and lightly crease over. And it's not too bad on this one, um, but that's how we get into those little fine areas. And if you wanna ink on both sides, which I often do now, this, this, for this plan, I know I am using the contagion side, contagious side up. But oftentimes if I'm not sure, if I'm going to flip back and forth, I may use one side or the other. I'll ink both sides um, and then I'm ready. I don't have to come back. I'm, I'm a messy inker too. My fingers oftentimes have a permanent brown tip or whatever color I'm using. So um, I tend to try to ink everything at once or the majority at once and then I'll come back and um, do another bulk, but I'll wash my hands <laughs> so that I don't fingerprint everything when I'm doing it as well. All right, so at this point, we're going to, let me pull my pages here. We're going to begin to build, and this layout has many steps. So I'll just give you that heads up. And it looks like I reversed it already. Oh my gosh, I did, crazy, um, <laughs> I did. So on the cake layout, which is the one we're gonna do first because building the cake takes a little bit of time. We're gonna use our contagious paper on the bottom and then we're gonna put our um, Abbey Road over top. And you can see I flipped that completely to what I did here. So um, I'm not gonna worry about it. <laughs> I just know that up front. So, and then these two borders, I just cut them from the half that I did here and they will be my border on this layout going vertically. All right. Um, so something to think about too, and I'm just gonna throw this out here because um, it's an idea that crossed my mind. You can make a really big wide cake across two pages split right down through the center or you know half of the cake and really get all of your photos in the center that way um so you if you choose to do that just make sure that you orient it um that your 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 borders and so forth are oriented on the page so that it's going to accent them um to the best ability that way um but let's get to let's do our cake first here and we'll go from there. So this, I'm gonna set out, set that back to the other side here. And I also, the other great thing about using this graph paper, having the grid paper on the back is that you don't have to measure or eyeball to get things straight. You can use the lines on the grid to keep it straight. And because I know that on this page, in order for me to get my cake in, I had to pull this all the way down. I pulled the scallops all the way down to the bottom of the page. I'm gonna go ahead and put this down. Normally I do not adhere this until I have all my elements ready to go. I'm also gonna use, just because of demonstrating live today, I'm gonna use a temporary adhesive. So if I need to pull this back up, to show you anything, I should be able to do so without tearing um, anything on the page. So you're gonna wanna probably do your permanent adhesive right off the bat and um, get it in place. Um, and this, I really did not, I pulled the top layer down as far as I could and that gave me the most amount of space on my, uh, for my cake. I really, you'll notice, I need to point this out too. You'll notice that my cake doesn't have anything on the top of it. 
And that's because I ran out of um, space at the top um, of the 12 page, you know, the 12 by 12. So I put the candles here. There shouldn't be any reason why you couldn't put some little squirrely ribbon or squirrely do's out of there maybe and make it look like an exploding, exciting uh, cake. But um, just so know that ahead of time in your planning so that you, if you wanna put something on the top of the cake, you can. So, all right, so here's our border. The next elements that I'm gonna cut out will be these decorative edges. And um, I don't know, did I mention too that I used stickles as my, to add a little bling throughout, you'll see it. I just went through and topped it out or did the little dots throughout. That's the sparkly that you see on these. So um, just as a heads up for that. So um, before I do that though, I'm going to, measure out my cake layers. And these measure, let me get the accurate ones for you. There are three of them. And the first one measures three and a quarter inches by 10 and three quarter, three and one quarter by 10 and one quarter. Let me write these down so that I can repeat them three and one quarter by 10 and one quarter. And that's for the cardstock backing. The next one measures also, I think it comes down to three. Yes, it's down to, no, three and a quarter also. And it goes to eight and three quarter. And then the top one, um, top one I kind of cut, there's really not a match for it. I cut it so that it would um, just kind of center in between uh, the edges of the middle layer. And it is, it is also three and one quarter inches. Um, and it ended up with cards or with the backing being like three and three quarter inches. So you can make those widths, any, any width that you want based on the pictures that you're gonna use. Um, I'm gonna design this layout without pictures, um, but I'm gonna show you how to do the pictures. So just so you know what's going on. So let me cut our, my cardstock here and let's see. Hi Janice, thanks for doing, joining in. Glad you made it, glad you made it. Uh, Debbie, the party set, Debbie Turney, the party set is available for pre-order right now. Um, and you can get on the website today and um, take advantage of pre-ordering and you can get the paper set or the templates or you can buy both and you can buy multiples of them. So um, tune in and, or go ahead and do that. And um, I believe, I'm gonna say that that offer is good through the weekend. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it extends beyond that. The idea book, the birthday timeline idea book, the digital version um, is good all week long, I believe. So, um, all right, so our first piece is, they're all three and three quarter inches wide. Our first piece is 10 and one quarter inches. And I did leave a little room for a slight border, just a very thin border. You can see it here. It's a very thin border around. And um, if you don't want to use or you don't want to have a border like that, then, then you know, take that into consideration. If you're going to print a photo that's this long and it has a border on it, then you may not need to have the background mat for the photos. So um, there's my first one. And my next one's going to be eight and three quarter inches. And I'm going to say that we're going to give this until about four o'clock and then maybe we'll talk about door prizes <laughs> or a door prize. Um, last one is three and three quarter 
or three and a quarter inches by three and one quarter inches. So let's just take a look at these. I saw someone early, um, earlier mentioned about the CM trimmer and yes, it is, it is my favorite right now. Um, let's see, Renee, your friction pens are heat erasable. Do you use? Yes, they they are the quilting erasables. Um, however, I do not use the heat erase on the paper. I use the eraser right here on the paper. So, and these are there are highlighters too that I use for quilting, um, and these are just the fine point. I forget. Are they a? They're a point five. This is the refill, and it fits in. The eraser, I don't know. I've I've used these pens for years, and um, it has taken since I added using or began using them for um, the um, scrapbooking, card making with the templates. Um, it's taken several years to wear down that eraser, and that's a lot of scrapbooking there too. So, so here's my cake, guys. That's it. And to cut the photos, these fit. Oops, that's the wrong one. Um, the three by four photo mat. The um, it's hiding from me. The three by three <laughs> photo square, which I had right here, and it has now decided to leave my site. Let me see if I can grab one. Here it is. The three by threes fit here and they're great for adding a collage for making a collage so have you used these for photos i mean they are seriously when i say they're my go-to they're my go-to so i place them on the photo and then i hand turn around uh sometimes i will use my pen and trace but most of the time i just hand cut just like this i don't want to cut david out of this picture though so we're not going to do that uh, but it is a, here's one. Uh, we put cut that. Sherry, I don't know if you're tuning in. You're probably, um, probably at work, but um, this is Sherry Simonson from Georgia, another creative partner from Georgia, um, who we attended conference together. So I will just literally take my long hand shears and cut straight down through using the template as a guide. Of course, you can use your trimmer, but I love the photo mats like this, um, or to use the photos for this, uh, because I butchered a lot of photos using my trimmer. Did anyone else do that? Make me feel good. <laughs> so, but here we go. Um, this is how I built the layers for the cake. And you know, if it gets to the point where you need to have more space, then you just use the three by three and add accordingly. So um, I'll go ahead and add this one on just so you can have a, an idea here, an element. Um, this one would actually fit here. Let's do this. And here's a trick. Here is a trick. So this is a long photo and I want to get the whole thing, but the template is only three by four. Ah, I'm still going to do this. I'm going to use the template. I'm going to cut as far as I can into it. And then I'm just going to slide the template down to the other end and continue to cut. And I love the ease at which, and look at that, it goes right there. <laughs> Jody, I don't think Jody is joining in, but Jody, this might be a surprise for you. <laughs> Maybe I'll do this layout for you and gift it for you. Um, Jody Scherzan, if any of you guys know Jody, my sweet, sweet friend. Um, it was great to spend conference with her, but I would do the same thing then for all of these again using the template as my guide. Now this one is hanging off a little bit more so it doesn't matter i'm going to still use my guide 
And you know, you can trace on the back. Um, you really have to find out, you know, what is your comfort zone, what works best for you, and how that all works, and do it. Go with the flow. Um, make it work. And I need to trim off this little bit of white here. I just love, and I, I, I guess I'm so um, adamant about these photos and the photo mats because when I first started with Kiwi Lane at the beginning, um, I actually sold the templates in our store at the very beginning. So I was wholesale customer first and then transferred over when they went um, direct sales. So um, it has been wonderful, but when we started out, I thought, oh no, why do I need photos? That's just crazy. Why do I need those? Well, yeah, you do, you need them. <laughs> they're, they're just awesome. I can't live without them now. Anytime I pack my travel kit to go, they are in there. The minis, the, they're, they all go, they're all there. And I think they're on sale this month too, or they're on sale right now too. So if you're logging on to order anything, um, grab them while you can. I, I wanna say they're 10% off this month. Uh, of course, if you're a Kiwi Club member, you get them on sale anyway. So um, at any rate, here I am saying, or here I am cutting pictures, even though I said I was not going to do pictures with this layout, <laughs> but there we go. I'm gonna cut off craft mat, <laughs> you guys, Tina and Lisa, if you're looking, I'm cutting off craft mat. I'm sorry, don't hurt me. <laughs> so how are we doing? You use vintage photo, Kim, that's awesome. Some of the inks definitely are darker than the others. So you wanna, you know, just find the one that you like. I do like to use colored, the colored inks also. Um, so they are fun to use too. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. The next thing is I pulled the um, party bubbles uh, paper, jade green on the back, and we're gonna do the trim, the layer trim under each one. Ah, I forgot this one. I did not mention to you that I also pulled frolic. Frolic number three is what I use to get the smaller, um, yeah, decoration, icing for this one. So I'm gonna use um, scallop first. We're gonna use scallop 1A for the bottom trim. And I better speed myself up here. We're gonna go this way first. And this is so that I can get a straight edge down. And we're gonna trim. And then to make my second layer, you can see I'm not being very cautious about being at exact, but to make my second layer, again, just to save time, to make this one, there's not a straight edge across it. It, it goes, it's scalloped. And all I did with that was move my edge up about a half inch. Now, here's another trick. If you're working on a cutting mat or a craft mat, you've got grids here. Why not use them? <laughs> so what you do is line the top up, the um, one edge of the top of your paper up with the appropriate marking. This one is 11 and a half. And then you make sure at the bottom, which is going to be out of camera view, I think, maybe not. Make sure the bottom is on that same line. Hold that in place and you're going to move the template then however wide you want it to be. My mat is half inch grids. So um, I can make it a half inch width or I can go to one inch. I'm going to go somewhere in between about three quarter of an inch. And we're just going to mark it right here. And this is about, um, this is just a little shy of um, one inch, actually. It's, it might be, I don't know, five eighths of an inch. And um, so there again, with two lines, 
and a cut, a straight cut, I've got two borders done. And while we're here, nope, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this off. And we're gonna make this about a half inch. And I will trace my frolic off this edge. And I could really, we, we're gonna do something different. For this one, I have the scallops, so trimmed here, but I have the scallop edge right here too. Nope, we'll do it the way I planned, sorry. <laughs> my, my customers know that that's usually what happens to me. I change midstream, change my plan midstream. I think it's always good to be flexible, right? <laughs> sorry about that. So there is Frolic. If you don't have these sets either, they're great. They've got the measurements on the side too. And they're just awesome as far as doing cards, doing page layouts. I use them for accents on full page layouts all the time. And they're just, they're wonderful. So can't, can't say enough about them. So now again, back to the curved scissors. And another thing to save time, I try to cut on the inside of the line. Eventually, I have to get down to the point where I am erasing something. Um, sometimes I don't erase. I mean, not always do I erase. Um, only if it's usually a lighter paper and the ink is going to react with the um, whatever craft ink I put on. But usually I, usually I do not worry too much about that. So, um, but cutting inside the line is, and that again is only if you're tracing on the right side of the page. So, all right. So let's see here. Good all week long. Thank you, Janet. I'm not doing a very good job uh, coming back and hitting the comments. I'll try to finish early and then scroll them on through. If you have a specific question just for me, feel free to message. And um, I am glad to address them as best as I can. I don't have all the answers for sure. And I guess there are really no correct answers. <laughs> It's all about you finding your groove and uh, your, your scrap and mojo, I guess, and uh, going from there. My group knows too, I used to have a shirt, actually. There are no mistakes in scrapbooking, only opportunities for embellishment. And I live by that. Uh, so um, I gave up the perfection thing a long time ago. It's just the way it works. All right, so I am going to come in here real quick and then we'll cut the little frolic out and then I think it will be time for door prize and how are we doing? Make sure to holler if you have a question. Um, we're going to take a quick look down through here. Um, oh, Linda, <laughs> hey, you know what? Be brave and just cut. Yeah, um, I did. I gave it up. I gave it up. I do trace a lot of things, but um, I did. I gave it up. <laughs> um, sometimes I just gave up the perfection thing after butchering so many photos, you know, um, anything that I do, even if it's a crooked line, um, anything that I do is going to be better at some of the photos I have on some of my past layouts. Uh, when we go back years ago, oh my gosh, I'd measure and measure and measure and still wouldn't get it right. So um, this is it. So, all right, so we're going to cut these. I'm going to ink them up real quick. And let me get this scrap out here and we will start to put our cake together. It's just like building a real layer cake. If any of you guys have done that, we just don't have to put the um, 
Oh, what are the, the poles, you know, the dowels down through to keep it straight, to keep it steady? We don't have to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. The benefit of making a cake in paper. And I'm going to, I'm not being really careful about inking these. So I'm just working fast because I really want to get done and I really want to address comments and questions come back through. So, all right, let's take a look here. We're ready to go. So I'm going to use my temporary. And again, I put as much, I put this down as far as I could on the um, page layout. And I kind of shifted it to the left so that I had room for a little bit of an embellishment here. Um, you can do that however you want to do. So I'm again using my lines as my guide for straight. And I've got a lot of room right here. So my first trim is going to go right on the bottom here. Now, again, when you're working with the scallops, you can decide if you want to start with the half scallop at the end, or since you have a large piece, if you want to center it and, um, you know, I do my little marks here, trying to get them as centered as I can. You could measure it. I'm all about the quick these days, which um, I shouldn't say that. It's not that I don't take my time. I just need to get this done for you guys. And then this I layered over top of the photos, okay? You could definitely slide it underneath the photos, however you want to do it. But I'm going to put my adhesive across the top and we're going to bump it up just about a quarter of an inch. And there's our first first layer. Second layer, I lined up a little bit. Now this is where it gets tricky. If you have faces on your pictures and you have your trim that you're going to go across, you probably don't want to cover up those faces. So you're going to want to adjust you're gonna wanna, oh my gosh, you're going to want to probably possibly adjust the second layer, position it so that the scallop is positioned and doesn't cut off the faces of the, the um, people in the photo below. And again, center it or mark it so that you know where you're gonna cut can't believe gonna wanna oh my goodness that might be central pennsylvania where are my other pennsylvania people <laughs> oh we're gonna trim this off and then i this is how this is where i do get a little chicken i'll leave my photo there put some adhesive leave my photo Linda Hansen, there you are <laughs> with a spoon in your mouth. <laughs> oh gosh, that was fun, wasn't it? Anybody remember that? Oh my gosh. All right, and then we're gonna cover this up. David, you're gonna lose a portion of your forehead at that, but there's our second layer. And a fourth layer, I don't have a photo on, but we're going to tuck it down in a little bit. And then, and I'll show you here with a little bit, I'm leaving about a half inch, maybe that's an inch at the top. I just slid the photo down in. Here's another option that you could do. Um, this is Susan and Abby here. We're gonna try to do a quick cut here. Um, I can reprint these thanks to my selfie. But this will just give you another option. So if you're running out of room at the top, you can slide that cardstock in. Then you can actually layer the photo over top the row before. Um, or you can tuck it down in as well, whichever is going to work. And then this piece is just going to go right over top here. Uh, and again, you're going to measure. 
and trim. And this gets, oh, and this is a little, this is a little iffy too, because I did not, I have one, two, three, four, I only have five photos on this page. I have seven on this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven photos on this one. So you can see how that varies a little bit um, and what a difference it can make as far as appearance go and um, how you can kind of collage your things, collage your photos and squeeze a lot more into that area. Um, all right, so let's do the embellishment here or talk about the embellishment and then the candles. The um, Candles are from Party. And again, that's available for order today, uh, pre-order. And I highly suggest it. If you're a Kiwi Lane scrapper and you do a lot of birthday celebrations, you're gonna need this kit, just trust me. Um, candle, birthday hat, party hat. Um, you have a bow, you have a cake stand this lovely little swirly top. And then you, there is a cupcake holder in here as well, which can be used. And then the banner also. Uh, we're gonna use the party hat and the candle for this one. Well, let's, I'm gonna stick the candle in here for now. And we're just gonna do party hat and let us grab these. And I really, I hate to take up camera time showing you how to cut and trip but or trim but Sandy Grant yes that is you <laughs> oh my gosh too funny I, I didn't see you commenting <laughs> but glad you're glad you're there yes wasn't that wasn't that a hoot we had a blast didn't we <laughs> Let me, let's see, Tina, Lisa, Sherry, Abby is here, Mindy, Debbie, there's Miss Sandy, up here is uh, Rebecca, Chris, and uh, Mary, Mary Snyder with Susan and I, super fun day, super fun day, um, super fun weekend, pre-COVID, <laughs> glad we got that in there, all right, where is my yellow, this is from the set cut the party hat out of the set and then um susan told me the other day that i did a good job with creative play i don't know um i love to layer i love to add embellishments i love to do to bling things up like that um so the party hat is a plain yellow party hat but I don't ever remember as a child ever having a plain yellow party hat. So I took, let me cut this out um, and just give you some tips. I'm sure you guys do this already, but just, you know, because we're here and there may be some new people around. Um, I like to use my scraps. My customers also know that I make a little scrappy card. It's my, um, and I use all my strips, all my scraps. <laughs> so if I can use one of this, a little bit of this trim, then I will do that. Now, another little tip, since I'm cutting this uh, little swirl on the top, I'm gonna show you with my scissors. I'm gonna go around and cut the same side on every one of these little feathery spots on top, cutting into the point. And Kathy Schwartz, if, or Schwartz, if you're on, you're probably working today, but if you're, if you're here, you can vouch for me. This is a tip that we were taught in kindergarten um, on how to go in and I how to, to cut these things out without making the big old gouge in the uh, point there. So now I've cut all the left side. I'm going to come back and cut the right side into the V. And then I don't have to worry about sticking my scissors in there 
and turning that point into, you know, a torn up curved edge. And this has been a lifesaver for me. It takes a little bit of extra time, but it is super awesome. I save, um, oftentimes before I started doing that, I would have to cut and recut, trace and retrace. And I used up a ton of paper to be able to do that. So I'm putting my kindergarten skills to good use. Kindergarten, first grade. So I'm gonna trace these. Now, of course, the other thing that you can do is trace the top of the party hat onto another sheet of different color cardstock. I just added my stickles to the top and put a little bling there. Um, I'm not gonna do that now because it takes too long for it to dry and I don't wanna smudge it. But with my hat then, here's a scrap from the top half of my uh, layer. And I'm just gonna cut that. I'm gonna put that across the top. Uh, if I had a, night, a longer piece, you know, I'd put it across the bottom, but I'm gonna put it across the top here and then trim off the edges. Making it work. And again, I don't go for perfection. Sorry, I hope that doesn't frustrate anyone. You could also put it across the bottom. Um, this piece I used, I used a scrap from the center one and that would work also. And then I did a punch using just a hole punch for a center across the top. And I'm not seeing my little hole punch right now, but it's just a quarter inch punch to punch a circle there. My goodness, wonder what happened to it. <laughs> I don't know where it disappeared to. I had it right here. Let's try this one. Um, again, just using a scrap. But I think that one is not large enough. So I'm gonna try, we'll put some orange on this. So we'll slide this in here and cut. And there we can ink this. And put on the top there. And there's your hat that we use for the embellishment. And again, I just went, uh, I added for the bling, I added stickles through the top and that simplified, simplified that. So um, you can bling that up any way you want to and it will be fine. Um, next is the contagion, which is, I highly recommend the small scissors for this. Um, if you have a pair, the shorter the blade, the better for cutting these and tracing as well. Super fun. I used the red, which is the back of the COVID paper, the contagion paper. And I'm gonna trace two of these because I did put one and then we'll do a door prize. We'll do the door prize. Um, I did put one of these on the other page and it's easier to cut two out at once than it is twice. Here's another tip too, um, and you guys probably know this as well, but anytime I have a sheet of paper this wide enough this way, um, I always catch myself. I need to trace a second one. Normally I would just go here, but because I may use, I may need another border, full length border from here, I tend to go lengthwise instead of widthwise, and that preserves that paper. <laughs> See, for me, it's all about not wasting the paper. That might be a little bit of an obsession, do you think? Um, an obsession with paper? <laughs> Why? Because I certainly have enough. Gracious. I need to just create with it and let it go. Anyone else have that paper addiction? Gosh, we need a support group, I think maybe. Especially with COVID, I have found myself buying more to make sure I had in case we get stuck inside. Not like I don't already have an unsurmountable collection of things, you know? 
um, just crazy. So I'll cut these out again with my scissor, my curved scissors. And um, <laughs> Linda, you saw you, I love it. <laughs> oh, you like gonna wanna? <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, gonna wanna, too funny, too funny. So same thing with the little COVID virus things. I'm gonna cut the right side. And then I'm gonna come back and do, even though I'm not doing points, I'm gonna come back through and um, do the left, the left side after I do the right side. And I don't think I need to show you guys how to do this. <laughs> you know, um, and we need to get to the next page. So are we, we are past halfway too, so I need to get a move on it. Yeah, 415. All right, so we're gonna cut the contagious out and it will go underneath here, underneath the hat. And then I did use the design um the um hello i used hello where did it go hello come find me hello number one from the design kit as a center and then put number 11 on there with letter stickers all right so that was um that embellishment so this one will go here the next one is the candles and i did three across the top on either side. I really didn't have um, a reason for selecting three. Ideally, I would have liked to have had 11. So, you know, I, I could still go back and put two or three here and put, you know, them along the sides. Um, but I, I did not do that. I just balanced it because that's part of my deal. So I put three here. Um, see how it's even blue, a striped one and a red one, and it's the same thing on the other side. I will call attention to this candle though. It is the pink um, from the pink paper. And again, see those stripes? I use the a scrap from this paper. I just cut these strips, you know, of color off and added them to the candle just attach them to the candles. And that kind of gave it a little bit of a different appearance. So lots of things you can do with that. And again, coming back in with the stickles, this is another addiction, coming back in with the stickles and then just highlighting a little bit. I did cut out the separate um, flame to out of yellow paper. I just attached that on as well. So that is that page. Let's move on to page two. And let's see, we've got Miss Jody here and Susan and I and our wonderful speaker. And um, this page is a little bit quicker, a little bit more quick. So let's just format this. Um, real quick. And this is the, another reason why I like to use my, um, cut my pieces, my borders out this way. Once I get one done, I know that the other one is already halfway done, um, halfway finished. So slide this on here, put my other one on, and then we're gonna do door prize. Overlap that, it's that quick. Then four, my square here i used the four by four photo mat or photo template and again just cut them out the same way same way just like this cut group together so the mat actually ends up being there's about a quarter of an inch um mat around and just about an eighth of an inch in between. So it's a double layer mat and it ends up being about eight and a half inches. Um, square. So I'll do one here just so you can have a visual with this. And then let's see, how are we doing? 
Um, let me close out of this window and let's do, I've said it enough, let's do our door prize. Um, thank you to Kiwi Lane for sponsoring. And um, here we go. Let's see who's here. Thanks to everyone that registered too. Um, Natalie Miss Rune, are you here? Are you here, Natalie? Just leave a comment if you are. Natalie, I'm going to go eight and a half inches for this. Natalie, Natalie, are you here? <laughs> Natalie, yay, Natalie. Okay, congratulations, Natalie. You've got a $25 um, gift certificate, gift card. From Kiwi, send your info um, off to support at Kiwi Lane or send it to me. Just message it to me and I'll make sure they get it to you. Um, either way works, but congratulations and thanks for joining in and for registering to join the class. All right, so we, there's an eight and a half inch one. And this is just going to be for a visual here. So I'm going to tack this down just a little bit with some temporary. I'm coming up about two inches or about an inch from the bottom. And again, I'm using my grid to uh, guide me on where to locate this, where to place it. And my edges are still free. I've learned to do that um, so that I can tuck and place things. There's going to be a contagious, let me cut this one out here, contagious template here. And you can see this, you can see how this works easily with the photos. Placing that on there, really simple, really easy to do. Am I missing questions, guys? Anybody? We're going to get caught up here directly. Um, there's such a delay, but let me let me finish this one. See if I can cut this out quickly. If you guys have secrets for cutting out the contagious here, why let me know. Um, it's such a cute little virus image. <laughs> if only the virus were as cute, huh? And let me pull this down so that you can see. And again, these pictures are from convention in January. So if you are a creative partner, um, you're probably reminiscing a little bit about this. We had a great time. And um, I highly suggest that anyone who is into scrapbooking, consider joining our one team. We work together as one unit, helping one another and supporting one another. So it's a great, great, great way um, to build friendships and scrapbook too. So it was, it was a fun, fun, fun event. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so thanks, Kiwi. Um, all right, so my contagion here. <laughs> this is the this is an, another tip for cutting out templates like this. If I know that I'm going to work on a specific um, page layout and I'm going to use certain templates, then I will cut, I will take the time to trace them and cut them out ahead of time so that I have them ready to use, ready to go. So we'll ink that up. Next thing I need um, is my rings. And again, this is rings three. We're going to slide him in here. So let me grab, did I just say him? Why did I say him? Shouldn't that be her? <laughs> Doesn't matter, huh? OK, 
Paper does shift, yeah. Party sparkle, most definitely, Robin, definitely. And you know what? We have another template called Jax that is very close to, it is a larger, it is about, um, is it five inches? And it is a great match and would be great for the party. It works, it works great. And that's why I thought it would, I mean, I guess on this page, it represents both a party and COVID since it's a COVID birthday, <laughs> but it, it will go either way. So I'm gonna see, that's a little pink, but I think we're gonna use it anyway. So here's another, um, another, my, my ring is only going to be a half, like two thirds of that ring. So I'm not gonna cut out a full circle. And reminder that you can cut out a solid from this also. You wouldn't need to trace the inside. So I'm going to just do about half two thirds, I should say, leaving about three inches from the bottom. I am going to trace on the inside and I'll tell you why. Um, I was going to do just the solid for this one, but my full plan here is to put candles, cut out a series of candles and strategically place them in here so that they are coming between the COVID little arms there. So I want them to, I want the open part of the rings. Um, the other part, the other reason I, why I like this is you're gonna get a circle then from the inside, a solid circle from the inside. Um, that you can easily cut, there it goes, <laughs> and use then for something else. See, here I go. I am, I, for some reason, I just can't, can't let it go. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, Linda Hansen, I hope that you are recovering nicely from that a uh, storm that came through. Uh, what was it, a derecho, derecho? Oh my goodness. Uh, I have been saying steady prayers for you, goodness gracious. And everyone that was in that horrible situation, what a nightmare. Um, so hang in there, you and the hubby both. Be, be safe and um, there's our circle or our rings and I have the circle left. Um, I need a bracket and this is my bracket three and we're gonna cut it from a, is anyone else addicted to brackets too? Can't work without them. I know one of my customers, Ivy, I don't know if Ivan is on, Ivy is on, uh, but oh my goodness gracious. Um, can't, I tuck brackets everywhere. <laughs> and you notice I'm saving the best for last. Anyone know what element I'm saving the best for last? Yeah, good, Robin. I'm glad I'm not alone. Not alone. The other thing I love with the brackets is the fact that you can layer them. Um, you can combine them any way you want to. There are so many options. I oftentimes use vintage, our a la carte bracket, which ends up being about eight and a half inches across. I oftentimes combine these bracket three and uh, the other. In fact, do I have let me see if I have a layout here. Um, this is one that we worked on last week as part of a demo in my group. It's really funny that this came up with party because I was just using this. But you can see here's one of the brackets. Oops, where did the other one go? Gosh, I'm telling you about this and then I grabbed the wrong page. How bad is that? Um, 
Holy smokes. Oh, well. It disappeared, but um, they're great for cutting out the um, word phrases. Oh my gosh, where did that go? Oh, here it is. Here we go. I thought maybe I was hallucinating. Yeah, so this was a birth birthday page that I did last week, but here's the bracket. This shows you, this is um, vintage with bracket number three underneath, but we used the bracket to cut out the words that way. And I love being able to do that. So um, love the brackets in that regard. So, all right, so let me put vintage back here and quit talking. <laughs> um, so I love this paper. This is the, again, from quarantine. It has the um, social distancing print on one side and the blueprint on the other. It's directional. So, um, well, it's not directional. Um, I say it's directional just because sometimes if you put the lines on going horizontally, your eyes go left to right. If they go vertical, they go up to down, up and down. So on this page, I chose to put them up and down because the pictures are in the lower half of the page. They're beneath it. So I want people to look down below rather than going to left to left to right and missing the whole bottom here. So, um, because of that, it limits the way I can um, trace and use my paper. But here's another tip. <laughs> the bottom part of this is going to go underneath my paper. So it really doesn't matter if the bottom edge of this is shaped. And only about, oh, this is about two and a half inches, I think. No, two inches of this will be exposed. So I only need about two and a half inches from the point down. So I'm going to not straighten this out. I'm not gonna take it over here and cut a new one. I'm just gonna pop this up. And if I want to, I can measure. And that's a little more than two inches. So I need to go about two and a half. And there we got it. So I'm going to take my pen and trace. And again, here I go again. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm not wasting extra paper by having to cut off a straight line or do anything in those regard or that regard. I'm just going to cut the tuck that edge underneath my um, photo, the mat here anyway. So it really it really doesn't matter what it looks like underneath there. It only matters if it matters to you. How about that? <laughs> oh, I'm glad, Deanna, that you love brackets too, because they are a must have. They, I, I have all of them. Plus we have the big brackets too. They're the um, bracket borders. They are phenomenal. Um, and there were brackets in Sweetheart. Sweetheart? Yes, there's a bracket in Sweetheart and um, oh, there have been, been so many. Um, so we'll ink this one. And this is where, uh, I mean, oftentimes I'll put these in and use them as decoration. But for this one on this page, this is where I plan to do my journaling. Now, the other thing I do with this, when I'm using a plain background like this, I will often write directly onto that sheet of paper, onto the foundation, um, into a section right there. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to write in the um, separate section, which I will mat using the white, a separate piece of white cardstock. And if you, oh, Dee, thank you. We are like-minded, huh? <laughs> uh, Debbie, for the small one, I'm using bracket one for the little one. It matches with, um, it works inside this one. And then make sure you saw it, because you could do this also. You could definitely use vintage underneath here and then use the, um, that's hard to see right there, but let me flip this around so you can see this way. 
it's an eight and a half inch square. So you could definitely put vintage if you want a little extra fluff. You could put vintage there and then use bracket number three. This is the big one, the bigger one. Well, yeah. And that could be your um, layering where you're journaling underneath. Um, so you have that flexibility. But I used for this one, I used bracket number three for the backgrounds. And I'm going to cut bracket number one out. And again, look at me working on top of my page here. I'm sorry. Um, it's just that I've learned to scrapbook this way. It's terrible. Those of you that have scrapbooked on trips or in cars, you learn to work in a smaller space. If you're working on a flat top box and you have to flip that box back or that lid open and close when you're doing it. So I have just learned to do this and it's terrible that I carry that through whenever I even have the space to work, but that's, that's what, that's what's going on. So, all right, and then we'll cut this out. And this is just a, a plain white smooth cardstock. It is not textured. Um, I always keep this on hand for cards, but I love to journal on this. It, it does not fade or bleed. Um, it's an 80 pound uh, cougar cardstock, and it is, it's great. It accepts stamped images and doesn't bleed. Um, so it's great for journaling. And I'll ink that up. You guys know too, when you're inking that that ink stays in the, the on the pad here. So it's not really necessary if you have a light surface like this, unless you want a really, really dark edge, um, you don't really have to keep inking back and forth in that regard. So I will go ahead and I do this normally like this, connect them, put one on top of the other and I'm eyeballing, I'm not measuring, center it. And then sometimes I'll trim this excess off. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm just gonna put my adhesive down and then slide through. Actually, I did not adhere this one. So let me put that in first. And I'm just sliding this one in uh, just so that those edges are, so that the rings is inside from the border, centered into the corner. And so that the edges are covered up. I'm not, you'll see that this one is sticking out a little bit. I'm not going to worry too much about that because my bracket's going to cover that up. And I'm just centering the bracket in underneath the border. And again, eyeballing using the grid on the paper. I hope Kiwi does more of the grid paper. It's awesome in that regard. Let me bump this up. And then my COVID or my, my um, contagion, contagious is gonna go right down in here and pointing it to the center so that my eyeball or my, uh, the wings are out. I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive down there. I didn't ink up contagious. I probably should have, but I didn't. Um, I don't know why I didn't, <laughs> but it's there. So thanks, Sandy. <laughs> I'm in a but hurry here to try to get things done. So I appreciate your help. All right. So there is the basic guys. This is the top half of the layout. The only thing we need to do is add the stickers and I did happy 11th. I'm probably gonna put Kiwi Lane across here too. Um, I need to find a, a darker teal letter sticker to do that. I think I have them, I just need to dig them out. So now let's build the cupcake down below here. How are we doing? It's 20 minutes. Let's see if we can do that. So I used a solid color cardstock for the base. Let me grab that scrap here. And I do love doing this part of the building. We're gonna use our um, Celebrate Cloud. 
and we need our oh things just like hide themselves in my tray here shapes and then i'm gonna grab my swirly cue and i could build cupcakes and ice cream cones all day long um and celebrate and birthday if you don't have celebrate that is a kit you want to get that is a template set that you want to get there's an ice cream cone that we made a long time ago hi lucy hi sherry um we did this a long time ago again it's so fun so fun but anyway let's go here so i'm going to trace on the back of this one and if you trace the entire hexagon you'll have enough for two cupcakes um and the other thing too with party you've got the cupcake base the cupcake liner base here i'm using the hexagon i'm sorry I'm sorry, Susan. I know I'm using tiny shapes. I want it back. Anybody else want tiny shapes to come back? <laughs> Susan, and they'll never have me on again because I'm promoting tiny shapes, bringing things out of the vault. <laughs> but I'm cutting out the hexagon and easy peasy now. We're just going to cut this right in half. I'm going to use a trimmer. I could use my photo mat, but I'm just going to use my trimmer and go from side to side and I have voila two cupcake bases all right next thing is to make your cloud ice cream uh and I am I always think of ice cream as like speckled ice cream chocolate chip mint chocolate chip so um anything that you know has sprinkles or has swirls through it there's lots of paper that uh, will work for this. I'm just going to go ahead and use the co contagion paper. And um, the cloud is wider on one side than it is on the other. So I'm actually turning the template upside down. And this is um, tiny celebrate I'm using. Um, the celebrate accessory set has the same elements in it. And I should point out that the cone here is actually from celebrate as well it is the pennant that is in celebrate so um that is an extraordinary set template set everybody have celebrate i hope um i did on the cupcake on the layout i did use stickles on here too to highlight you know just to make those sprinkles and things pop out and I'm only going to build one of these so that you can see. But here's our here's our ice cream. And you can make, you know, double layer if you want. This is my really fluffy cupcake. And I'm going to just put a little bit of adhesive down on the bottom here. Not much at all. If you're going to do a permanent, you know, um, you can add more, but I'm just putting a little bit so you can see it's there. Tilt, turn any way you want. And then the little swirly cue on top, which is a fancy, really fancy cupcake. Um, so I used the orange paper on this one. You can put plain on here. You can see I have like chocolate on the bottom with the dotted on the top. Um, I'm actually for this one, I think going to top it with a little bit of the pink. So we'll have like strawberry ice cream on top. And um, this is the Contagion paper, one of the foundation papers or quarantine paper. Um, and we're just gonna trace it. This is just the cutest little swirl. Oh my gosh. You guys need to get that set. <laughs> And I think I did see someone. It needs to come out of the vault, Debbie. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Susan's going to fire me, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, Dee, yes. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, Dee. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and you guys, too, as we finish up here, just a reminder that it might take a little bit 
but this will be on the events page on kiwilane.com. So when you log on, um, you'll be able to go there for replay and have access to um, being able to do it uh, you know, at your own speed, do it over and over again. And please share your finished layouts with me. I'm going to do a little challenge with my own group um, on the 11 photo kind of thing. I, of course, I didn't do that today as part of the demonstration, but you, you saw, I got to see how that works. Um, so share them with me. I'd love to see the ideas. You can share them on kiwilane.com make sure you connect and and share that stuff it's um i love to see what everybody does so there is the cupcake gang and then the candles the candles oh and i forgot to share with you the twine that i used um i put some adhesive on the back some permitted adhesive on the back right at the top of the the cupcake liner and then pulled twine and i always do about 12 inches of twine and just laid this right on the adhesive there and then when you bring it around front you kind of have to bring it underneath the icing there and just tie it and that gives you this little bow underneath and you know the trick to doing the bow when you tie like this the strand coming down the bottom, the strand that's underneath the bar cross is the one that makes the loop to the left. Then you bring the top one down over. Little home ec lesson here. Top down <laughs> over <laughs> and then push the loop back up. And I'm sorry, my big hands are in the way here. And then just adjust and there's your bow. And you can definitely put some adhesive then underneath here on the top cover to hold that or on the top to hold that in place um, so that it uh, doesn't move on you. But that is, that's what I did here. Um, you know, in the fancy cupcakeries and so forth, you get all the special wrappers and um, all the extra touches and so forth. And that's, I guess I was trying to be one of those. Not that I need to, <laughs> but you can stick a little dab of glue underneath there and then you have that little extra touch there. So um, last thing, I've not done a candle today. So let me show you the candle quick. They do take some time. And I know, oh no, where did my candle go? <laughs> there it is. See the panic. Oh golly. At least I put it back in the the holder here. That is one thing I never do. Um, the girls that scrapbook with me regularly on the lives and so forth um, know that I normally just have all my templates just uh, skewed all over. Amy, I was so glad to see you putting everything away um, at once because that is so me. But the birthday set is the one set that when I use it, it goes back in that folder because I, I have not wanted to lose that. Actually, all of my club templates I'm like that with. Um, so cutting the flame is fun. And that's the one that I use just a little piece of cardstock. I have yellow here. You can use whatever color you want to make the flame. And I normally, you can see, I've already traced several flames on here. So I'm just going to cut this out. And I will even put adhesive on the back of the sheet of paper before I cut them out. So the, the adhesive is there. And um, then I don't have to mess with it. So, uh, but I didn't do that with this one. So we'll put some adhesive here and do the top part of the blade or uh, flame. And then I always end up trimming this off to make it match. And there you have it. Ink that. And you've got a cupcake. There you go. Put as many candles in there as you want. 
So what do we have? About 10 minutes here, guys. That was really super fast. I did pop this too with the foam squares, which are available on the website. So make sure you check them out. Um, let me pop on here real quick and see. I uh, like simple with tons of photos. So this happened. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Mary. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, I've got the tray right here too, Debbie. See that? Um, it doesn't matter though. The trays aren't big enough. <laughs> yes, it's awesome. Um, when I asked this question at the beginning, I was told no. And was that, I'm wondering what that is. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Shirley. Thanks, Krista. Um, and again, you guys can catch the replay here. Um, I'll just say thanks to Amy for getting this all figured out today. And Susan and everyone for the opportunity to be here. I appreciate it. And I hope to see you guys again. Um, thanks, Robin. Glad you like it. There you go, Debbie Gwen. Hi, Lisa, my dear. Um, uh, Kim, yes. Over on, log into your account on um, kiwilane.com. And it is... Oh, wait, you want the quarantine kit. No, I'm sorry. The quarantine kit is not available. If you want the birthday kit, um, Gwen, it's Vintage Scrap, vintage scrap Stitch VIP. Um, where did that go? Um, Tina, was it Tina? Oh, my. Oh, yeah, Tish. Embossing the squirrel with an embossing folder is awesome. Kim, yeah, if you want this set, if you want the party set, you need to log on at kiwilane.com. And it is under the birthday, I forget what it says, birthday presale. Um, let me see here if I can grab it real quick for you and see what it says. Under the shop button, yeah, birthday presale is the birthday kit. That's where you'll find that. After you log in, it'll be there. Um, thanks, Stacy Samuelson. Thanks, Sherry Robertson. Thanks, Monique. Um, thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Lori. Lisa Wiseman, I'm glad you got to join in. Um, my computer is stalling here, so um, I appreciate it, guys. And yeah, I'm not sure what my computer is doing. Thanks, Lucy. <laughs> it is fun and easy. That is for sure. And Kiwi Lane helps us be able to do that. Can we see the tray? Here you go, Janet. Here you go. These were trays that we received as um, uh, creative partners, instructors when we first started. It is about 12 inches by about three inches. And I know that there are trays like this available if you can no longer get the um, Kiwi Lean tray. They are um, out there, you can find them. You are welcome, Dawn, thanks for joining in. Um, Gwen, Gwen Jackson, reach out to me if you um, can't find a group. And Debbie, let's see, and yes. Um, Yes, Mary Clifford, you need to get scrapping. <laughs> so what am I missing here? Oh, Amy, the cupcake. The cupcake is addicting. I want to tell you, they are addicting. They are super addicting. Um, and it's really fun to do an ice cream cone with two or three different layers on. It is, they're just so much fun. And there's so much that you can do with the different colored or different types of paper also. Um, you'd be surprised. We did one at one of the crops that I hosted. Um, we actually made this card and the girls just went nuts making different flavors of ice cream. Um, Sherry, I don't know if you're still on here. I know you made yours, but they're just, they're just so much fun. I love them. I love to create them. It's an, it's an awesome set. So um, make sure, I'm glad they brought it out of the vault. I'm very glad. Thank you, Susan and crew for bringing it out of the vault. It was awesome. So there's the page guys. 
got the tips on putting the multiple photos in so that you know how to do that. Um, the cloud, Rosanda, is in Celebrate. Um, oh, thanks, Ruth. Yes, silverware drawers in the or silverware uh, trays in the drawer. Yes, it is definitely. Um, and Rhonda or Rosanda, I hope you heard Celebrate. Um, you are welcome, Kim. Yes, Annette, you'll be able to see this uh, on the events page over at QELean.com. Won't be a problem. It'll be there. It might take a little bit of time, but you'll be able to um, see it there. Um, there you go, Alice. Anybody that wants Contagious and temp, uh, together the templates, um, they're there. Um, uh, so I guess that's it. Um, You'll have a chance to do the replay and hear all about the different templates. The most important one, again, is to register and get the party set. Um, and if you don't have a creative partner, reach out to me. I'm glad to help you with that. Um, the other set is Celebrate that is really important for making the cupcake. Of course, the quarantine kit, um, if available. Um, you may see it on the buy sell group too on kiwilane.com. Um, check there. And brackets, uh, funky frills, Abbey Road. I have Hello, the one design kit, the little flower there, rings. And I did say brackets. Oh, and then scallops and frolic. So that is really it for the layout. It is. Oh, and photos. Oh my gosh. How could I say, how could I say that's it? You need to have the photo templates. <laughs> you need to have those. They are crucial um, for this, especially the little, oh my gosh, the little, these, the mini photos guys. Yeah. The mini photos, they are awesome. If you want to highlight a separate little element out of a page like that. They are just, they're awesome. So um, I know you don't think you need them, but you do. So make sure you grab them. So, um, all right. I think we are at 56. I'm going to finish a little bit early. Um, Rosanda, I think I answered you. Kathy, I don't think so. And I hope not. I can't find a way to log on other than watching Facebook Live. They've attached all of them so far. And then they announced the winner. They have been commenting here. Um, Kathy, no, this one was done a little bit differently. We were actually not supposed to be giving door prizes away. So um, this one um, was handled by from those that registered on the class. So if you have any questions about door prizes, reach out to Amy at kiwilane.com um, or to Susan or just support at kiwilane.com and they can um, answer those questions about the door prizes. Um, thanks, Andy. Glad you got to see yourself. <laughs> uh, the topping, Amy, is in birthday or in party. It is the pre-order Kiwi Club set that's available right now. So make sure. And yes, Terry, yes, the um, video will be available for relay or replay. Um, if you end up not being able to find the link, just reach out to me and I will refer you. Um, but it will be in the events section on kiwilane.com under the events tab at kiwilane.com. All right. And let's see, there are more comments here. Hope that helped, Amy. Um, Karina, I need two more. Uh oh, what candles to make it 11? Yes, you're right, I do. <laughs> oh, glad you enjoyed, Kathy. Thank you. You want the paper, Sharon? Okay, well, that's the quarantine kit. You're just going to have to take a check or take a look and see um, if there will be any available. Check the buy sell group on uh, kiwiland.com. And um, we'll go from there. We'll see if we can help you out. If you can't, reach out to me and I'll see if I can find one for you. Thanks, Kathy Schwartz. Hi, Terry Crawford. Um, where are you here? Kathy, there are three sets of the photo mats. There are. There's the photo mats. 
which goes up to five by seven. And then there are, those have the border. They, they have the um, half inch segments on them. So here's the four and a half by five and a half inch. So the photo mats have the half inch border on them. The photos are the straight size, the four by five. And then the minis are, they go down to two by two and they are predominantly square. Um, so check those out. They are on sale right now. They are on sale. If you log on to your account, you will see them and they are, they're on sale there. So I can't live without them. Uh, here's another thing too that I love to do. The, here's the vintage um, and being able to use the templates to place a photo inside them. It's awesome. So can't say enough about them. But anyway, all right, what else? Um, stickles, where do I buy mine? Ugh. Um, get in touch with me, Rosanda, <laughs> and I can give you the long list of places to get them. Um, you are welcome, Annette. You're welcome, Carol. Uh, hey, Sandy, right back at you. You're welcome, Paula. Thanks, Ruby. Thanks, Sharon. Oh, you've been in quarantine for a month. I am with you, girlfriend. <laughs> so this is awesome to be, I hope you're well. I'll say that, I hope you're well. Um, all right, guys, I'm signing out. Thanks everybody, watch for the um, replay soon.